Hello, everybody. Today, we are going to have a very short case um, about uh, um, some cranial stuff, cranial pathologies. And uh, I just have to get to my neurosurgery case review. And uh, obviously, um, brain tumors are not a very prevalence comparing to other tumors, but um, but there are sometimes they can be really devastating um, for the, the uh, and the, if it's a glioma, if it's like multiple uh, uh, multiple astoma multiforme, they are univariously actually deadly. So I'm going to go and to my neurosurgery case review. And I'm going to share it with you in a second. Hmm. For some reason, I'm unable to find. Oh, here they are. Let me share the screen with you. Okay, this is the neuro Facebook neurosurgery case review. And I'm looking for a very specific case. One of my early cases where we have a very large calvarial meningioma. Actually, I think I'm going to use that today. And here is the case. Now, I'm going to actually, let's see here. When we are looking at these films, um, what's important to note, these are enhanced pictures. And uh, as, as you see, we have a very large mass um, that is connected to the Falk cerebri. And if you look carefully, you see the part of the tumor is actually growing outside of the skull. And here you see it is on the left side. So you would expect by extension, uh, a, a create extension of a tumor as a symptom having a problem with the um, right side of the body as well as with the practically with the speech. You see that the, there is a significant mass effect, but the ventricles are surprisingly actually small and normal. And that is by itself is a sign that this tumor is growing very slowly. A fast growing tumor of this size would cause significant more mass effect, edema. And as well, you see that there is not really much of edema. Here you see again this tumor, um, uh, and, and you see that it is quite um, high and it uh, grows into the skull itself. Here in this picture, you see the extracranial extension of the tumor. And by all a radiographical characteristic, and um, because of the small, slow growth, this is a meningioma. Um, today, let's talk about that. We another day we'll talk about the malignant tumor of the brain. And as you see here, 
the extension of the tumor all it's reaching uh, toward the thalamus even and uh, but as well it's growing through the skull outside and that is a characteristic of meningioma that they can grow through the skull to outside now another thing that you see here the tumor extension toward the dura you see here the dural tail and with the um, meningioma dart, the so-called symptom classification that tells you what is the likelihood for the tumor to come back. And if you can get all the dural tear, uh, tails, the likelihood is much lower. But the problem is here, trying to get all of that uh, at once, um, if you have to know what is the sagittal sinus is doing. And as a matter of fact, if the sagittal sinus is occluded, that happens over years. That brain has enough time to uh, find alternative paths for the uh, venous backflow. But if there is any flow in the, the sagittal sinus, trying to close it in the surgery can be actually deadly. So in a way, if the, the sagittal sinus is still uh, open, it's sometimes better to wait over a period of time until the sinus closes, because in that time frame, brain can reroute venous backflow. And here, as you see in the MR venogram, that there is no venous opening of the sagittal sinus. So that means it's, this tumor is resectable. You can reject it, and obviously there is no way to get this tumor without sacrificing the sagittal sinus. Look at how the what the extension is, it goes to both sides and sagittal sinus would be in the middle. You cannot really, and trying to uh, anastomose it and so on, it, they all fail. So if, if there's any venous flow through the sagittal sinus, it's better to wait until it closes naturally. Now, here as well, you see again that, that uh, there is no tumor, no flow in the sagittal sinus. For that reason, we decided actually that this tumor is resectable. Now, what is important here, if you come back here to this picture, we have to take all the dural tears. Trying to plunge to the tumor directly can be having massive bleeding. And because it's tumor and, and they quiet, the vessels are abnormal, they don't contract with electrocautery. So that could be as well deadly plunging in the Tumor. But what we know about the meningioma is that their um, vascular supplies through the dura. So meaning that if we cut the dura all around the tumor, the tumor will become an avascular um, practically mass that you can remove without you know, literally you know, causing massive bleeding. For that reason, this was the plan. Actually, I learned this plan in MD Anderson when I was in Texas. But what I what we try to do is making eight holes. These blue dots are the holes in the skull. There are two in the back. And then once we are there, we cut literally four pieces of like a railing of the skull off. And by doing that, we keep the tumor. The red is the boundary of the tumor. We keep the literally the tumor untouched by putting the these four this holes here, we run what we call the craniotom. The craniotom cut between these holes, and then we take each of these pieces individually out, and that gives us access to the dura underneath. Once we have the access to the dura underneath, as you see here, we have uh, done to, taken the skin, the scalp off, but we are preparating the scalp so it doesn't touch the so-called gallia, that membrane under the skull, because under the gallia, this is actually tumor and this is skull. We don't want to touch it. We want to remove it all at once. So once this, it's exposed, we put lots of holes, practically two here, two in the front, two in the back, and so on, and run a craniotom here. You see that there? Now one, one here are the holes. We run the craniotom between these holes and then remove these four pieces. Once these four pieces are removed, practically you have access to the dura and then you can coagulate the dura and that 
literally removes all the vascular supply to the tumor. And here you see the tumor and the skull is removed and those uh, mosquitoes and snaps, as you see here, they're closing the remnant of the sagittal sinus. Here you see actually the tumor. You see this is the intracranial. This used to be the sagittal sinus. This is the intracranial part of the, the tumor. And the skull as well has to be removed because the tumor is growing into the skull. Now, after this uh, tumor is removed, now obviously we have to still close the dura. So to do that, we use bovine pericardium, as you see here, we use multiple pieces of bovine pericardium and sew it to the dura and then connect them together so that the, the cranial vault and the dura around the brain is closed. Then literally what we do is we use a titanium mesh. I literally use the back of a bow to form this titanium mesh to the form of the skull. And then um, put it on and we put it on the skull and then we put screws around and then we put the um, some tacks that bring the dura uh, connected to the mesh so dura cannot or whatever replacement of dura we put in cannot collapse. And then we pull the sk uh, skin over it and then obviously close the skin. So here is post-operative CT that shows, yes, there is some edema. And this is what you see here is the mesh. And then uh, here is post-operative MRI a few months later that shows the tumor has not come back. So this is, this patient actually did pretty well. He was a prisoner in Texas prison system. And uh, I'm, I saw him a few times before my, I was done with my chief residency in Texas. And uh, this, uh, he practically didn't have any deficit with, after resection of tumor. And um, because he was a prisoner, we wouldn't get a picture of him, but he's uh, cosmetically as well, his brain and his head was not deformed. It was a really good cosmetic result. The incision for a tumor like that is practically from one year to another. As you see here, Literally, we cut the skin from front the ear to the one ear to the other in the middle, and then we peel the skin in the front and back to expose the entire skull. This is actually quite fast. This exposure of the skull is very efficient and very fast and give you access to practically the entire skull. Um, so this was a very short presentation of this case. And today we don't have anybody to drill and ask question, but uh, uh, please leave a comment. And if I have uh, uh, any comment, I will come back and answer that in the future. Well, you guys have a great weekend. And as uh, usual, you know, to study hard and uh, be successful. And uh, I hope we see you soon in one of our next uh, case conferences. Tomorrow morning, we have Inspired Spine case conference as well, which are mostly spine for uh, spine cases for spine surgeon. Um, but if you have interest uh, on LinkedIn or um, it's elsewhere, text me and I send you the link. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.